I think we'll start this out with the example. Hang on, the hammer chain is you're going to have a pass. I wonder why I'm a bit loud. You grab by the function. All of our yeah, right. we might be wrong. We're funny, but not always a I lean on a rock today to tell you about a story. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, I'm going to tell you a story. I'm not going to tell you about a story. In fact, I'm going to tell you a true story. I'm going to tell you one that I used to do. Anyway, so the topic. Um, I had some questions about the different types of teaching methods, the naturalistic teaching methods, um, the DTT stuff, and things like that. So we're going to do those piecemeal, of course, psych or, you know, we're going to break them all down and make little tiny things. Um, so here's your little tiny thing on personalized system of instruction. All right. Um, so PSI. Not pounds per square inch. I, you know, I, every time I see PSI as a scuba diver, all I can think of is, man, how much do I have left? Um, but <laughs> That's an inflated topic. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I didn't know it was dad junk day. I think we're about done. Anyway, so not pounds per square inch. We were talking about personalized system of instruction, right? So for this, we got to go back to the Keller and Schoen, or the um, Keller, uh, Fred Keller stuff, right? So Fred Keller's courses um, where he, he developed the PSI method. Um, and there used to be these things called Keller courses, uh, which is where all run were by PSI. Well, you don't need to hear that story. You need to hear my story. My story is cooler than Fred's. No, not true. Fred was awesome. I didn't know him, but I think he was awesome. Um, let's see. So personalized system of instruction allow, it uses behavior analytic principles um, in order to teach regular old content, right? It's how you structure things is what really makes the difference. So um, in the, the, so I'm going to talk about the class that I used to use. I did this with a whole bunch of my classes, not all of them, but, but most of them. Um, so I decided that it was important to start using the principles um, that uh, the, of behavior analysis to actually teach behavior analysis. Hmm, it's a no, novel idea. The irony is, is not many behavior analytic instructors will do that um, because it's really, really, really flipping hard um, to, to pull off. But it's it's worth it. Um, so it, so I used PSI in the classroom, uh, and it, it was this. I, did, I was doing it for both undergrads and graduate work. Right. So we would we would set it up like this. Instead of a traditional class where you just go through, you take your test, you get your 70 or 80 percent, whatever you move on. You could even put a mastery criteria on it that's cool um, so you get a certain grade if you get mastery level at tests or things like you know, all sorts of stuff you could do I'm getting myself sidetracked here um, so with PSI it's not about the particular score on a particular test it's a combination of things so you start out with like mastery okay so we have a mastery criteria um, so what I did was use a mastery criteria for each um, let me call it, for, for each block of content, each chapter if you want, maybe it was less than a chapter, maybe it was more, it doesn't really matter. So I would use, a, 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 I think a 90% criteria is what I had. So you had to pass the test with 90% or better before you could move on, right? So then you move on and so on and so forth and you can like self-pace yourself through the course, right? So you could do chapter two, then chapter three, and chapter four, chapter five. And there was like 12 or 15 tests throughout the quarter, uh, throughout the term. It was challenging, right? Students had, it was, it was really challenging, but there's more to it. So you would master the test. Now, here's how I did it. I had video lectures, surprise, surprise, um, where students would watch the videos and then they would come to class, right? But you were only allowed to come to class if you'd mastered your material. So if, if today's topic was chapter two, you had to master the test on chapter two before you showed up for the lecture. Why? Well, that makes lecture certainly reinforcing, right? Because all of a sudden, the faculty member's not standing up there talking about uh, walking you through the chapter that you should have already read, right? You've already passed the test, right? So now I'm not regurgitating a textbook to you. I'm interacting with you on a higher level, so hopefully reinforcing your interaction with the material, your understanding of the material, strengthening your behavior in terms of you communicating about it, talking with me about it, and talking with other people in the classroom. And then we had a bunch more applied examples, and I got, I didn't have to worry about teaching the textbook in the classroom anymore. So, so how do you grade something like that, right? Well, first off, I gave students unlimited attempts. You could do as many times as you wanted on the test. You just couldn't show up for the classroom. The classroom had participation points, so you had to participate throughout the year, so you got reinforced for participating in the content, right? Uh, and you could always, of course, catch yourself up, and you, you're fine, you skipped, and you could never master number chapter two. Fine, you can master chapter three and move on, you know, and show up for next week's lecture. It's okay, there was some flexibility in there. There was regular coursework, regular assignments that people got reinforced for. Um, in other words, they got points, but it was graded on how far you got through the content. So if you got through 70% of the tests, if you mastered 70% of the tests, you got 70% on your exams. If you mastered 100% of the tests, you got 100% on your exams, right? So in, if you win each test that you mastered, right, 
um, you get 100% for that test, right? So if a test was worth 25 points, um, once you mastered it at 90% or better, hey, grade book says you got 100%, sounds good. And again, the grade that you, you earned in the class was determined by how much content you got through. So very similar to a Keller course, except with today's world, you can use computers to do this. I didn't need stacks of people to go through and manage all this stuff like Keller did, had, had to do in the 70s. It worked beautifully. Students hated it for about three weeks, and after that, they fell in love with the material uh, or the, the procedure because it's really highly engaging, um, and it really does change your behavior as a faculty member. You really have to be on your game because you have to be able to talk about not just what's in the book. You don't just summarize the freaking book. That's annoying, it like torques me off. And if you're a faculty member and you're listening to this, take note, because your job is more important than regurgitating a textbook, because a student can read the textbook. It's your job to help them understand it. So get them to learn it, have them master it outside of class, come to class and bring something more to the table than your interpretation of Cooper or Milton Berger or whatever else textbooks out there that are awesome this year, right? Um, and sorry, I'm getting a little pet peevey about this and I get annoyed about it because you faculty members out there have a huge skill set that you're not applying and you're you're not doing your students any uh, any justice by standing up and edutaining in front of the classroom right it's not even it's not even it's not even it's not even instruction folks come on behavior analysts just do better anyway sorry getting off my high horse a little bit there um so again PSI, you definitely a really, really cool to tool to use. It's challenging to develop. Um, we're happy to answer questions about it and help you if you're a faculty member. Heck, if you're a student and you want your teachers to do this or your faculty members to do it, let us know. We'll, we'll, we'll write emails and uh, teach people how to do it and talk about it, and we can even do videos and things like that. And, oh, yeah, that's right. Wait a minute. All of the book material is already here. It's called our channel. It's beautiful, right? So all the work's already done for the instructors. Now you guys just have to build around that. Think about that. See ya. Ladies and gentlemen, are you tired of studying for your exams? Are you tired of flipping pages through Cooper? Are you tired of reading endless paragraphs? Are you tired of reading the same paragraph over and over again and you still can't figure out what the main point is? If you're tired of even reading the first sentence of that paragraph, maybe you should join us. It's a psych cram session, and they're coming up soon.